Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy. I'm RJ. Not really. This is Ying, and that is Yang. Yes, and they're the kittens. They're getting big. They come in to eat nowadays because the big kitties kind of beat them up. All right, we're going to go put these down to eat, and then we'll get really into the podcast. Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm the real Christy. Meow. <laughs> and he's the fake RJ. Meow. <laughs> All right, and today is... Update 146, I believe. And it is July 30th. Mm -hmm. Okay. We had a lot of fun last night. So we'll get to that in, uh, in just a few minutes. Okay. We'll start off with in the barn stalls, right? Sure. Alright, so what has happened this week in the barn stalls? Um. She gets to go in there and sleep every night. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um. Alright, let's start with the kids. They were being doctored, correct? Yep. Alright, and they finished their what? Their treatment. Their five days of medicine? Yep. Correct. Okay. Don't do that. People are not gonna be able to watch that. Um. They finished their five days of medicine. What's with Dirk? Come on. Um you're already goofing around it. We aren't even into it yet. Uh huh? Not Dirk. I'm sorry. Kavayu. Oh, yeah. What's with Kavayu? That's what's what I'm saying. What's in the barn stalls? And he's just like, whoa. Um, he had too much partying last night. We took him to Doc. To Kavayu. Yep. Okay. To Doc. What for? To get a knock cut off his leg at the crowd play. Okay. Now, um,. We did a little segment on what proud flesh was. Doctor said um, he explained that the only other thing it could be is like two viral tumors. He doesn't think it is though. Um, so what do we have to do? Doc, cut it off, and then we have to put this stuff on it for five days. Yep, and it is called Proud's off. Um, we were using Wonder Dust. And the wonder dust worked in the beginning and then it just kind of didn't, huh? And so now we've got this Prouds off and we do this for five days, right? Now there was a complication when um, it was cut off. What happened? Yeah, now Proud flesh bleeds, okay, just so you know. Mm -hmm. um, and it bleeds a lot. But what happened with it the It wouldn't stop bleeding. It, it's, this is our first dealing with Proud flesh with Mustang. And it would not stop bleeding. Um, so he has quite a bit of dirt and stuff still down his leg, which we haven't really cleaned off because we don't want to knock the the uh, scab off. So we just kind of let him stay out there in the stall. He stays up and gets doctored once a day for how many days? Five days. And he's got how many more to go to? This is today. It's the last day. Today's his last day. There tomorrow. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. And he did it yesterday. Okay. Um, anything else in the barn stalls? I don't think so. I think everything else is doing good. Um, we have a few over in the watch pen, but nothing terrible. Uh, the whole beating up on each other in the man pen thing is going on. So we've got some of those limping, but it's just because one will hit one, then the other, you know. Um, oh, the horseshoe had come today, this week, though, too. Yeah. Yep. And Kavayu had been to the vet on Tuesday. He was sore on Wednesday, and Thursday he did awesome for the horseshoe. So, yeah. Um, he didn't seem to fuss or... He doesn't seem to hold a grudge as long as a domestic horse does. Like a domestic horse wouldn't let us touch it. Wait. Doc said that um, most horses, after they have them cut off, you know, you need to watch them because they're going to kick your head off. Did he? No. Nope. 
he, he kind of moved away at first, but then once you put the stuff on it and he figured out it wasn't going to hurt, he just stood there. He, he didn't, you know, and most horses will if they've kind of not cut off that leg. It does hurt. Um, he had to have an uh, anesthetic and all this stuff, but uh, he just doesn't react like other horses, does he? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's just his disposition or if he's if it's just the Mustang name. I, I really don't know. So, anyway, all right, anything else going on for him to doctor? Bidet still hasn't done anything or hoping soon. She's big, isn't she? She can do it when you leave. No. Still a week away. No, no, no. no. Plus, so. now the legs cross. I'm like, come on, let's go, come on. Mm -mm. No. All right, mending fences. What did we get repaired today? Or this week? We got a new car. Got the car replaced. That was our big thing, and I was running. This week was kind of hard in the farm house, but we'll get to that here in a little bit. Um, what else did we get fixed? I got the two posts. We're going to move the fence. If you remember, we took down the big tree, and we're going to look at moving the fence, um, hopefully today, so that I can get the dogs out. Kid, he likes to run. Stop it. Kid likes to run, and he is in the little uh, pig pen and dog pen out there, and uh, it, stop it. Don't Here, look at it. If you don't look at it, it doesn't bother you. No. I have peripheral vision. Yes, it does. It's you that doesn't have to look at it. Go ahead. Door. He has no peripheral vision, so he doesn't understand that it, yeah. Now all I'm seeing is dots. Dork. Um, we'll talk to that big dot. Instead of beating that big dot. <laughs> anyway, um, so he hasn't really gotten to run. We took him out and uh, <laughs> took him out and got on the pasture and let him run a little bit. Letting him go out to check the pump and stuff with us, but it, it's just not the same. It, he doesn't get to run around, run around. He's starting to go kind of stir crazy. So I'm going to try and get that fence in today. Um, oh, wait, we uh, did get the pump. Oh, that's in the field, didn't it? Okay. So, oh, this is off. We had to work on it. We'll just put it in here. Mending fences. Um, we did get one other thing done. What did we get this week? We got a stock. A horse stock. What is a horse stock? Because people are not going to understand it. Stock is livestock. Um, yeah, the thing you buy on Wall Street, I know. Stocks and bones. Yeah. yeah. But that's not what we got. We got a horse stock, which is what? Um, kind of like the thing in Jigger. That people had to stand in in the town square with their hands in. That stick. is not the right kind of stock. Well, it's kind of like on the same principle, but only it's for a horse. It's a little box. So okay, everybody now has this cartoon picture in their head of this horse standing with like Scooby Doo or something. Well, at least I'm good for something. You got one line. All right, so what is it? It's a little box they walk in. It, it's like in a little chute, and it's solid in the front and the back opens. One side opens, um, and you just walk them up in there, and it makes them stationary. They can't um, go anywhere or anything. So if we have a horse that we have to doctor, it's a lot safer because the horses won't fit in our chutes, will they? No. If you don't stop it, I'm going to beat you. Mm. Alright. Next. What do we got? In the yarn farm. What have we been doing? We tumbled the fleece, right? Yep. Tumbled the mice right out of them. Yes. I had a mouse get in one of my fleece. Because I had stored them in the barn. I was going to bring them in. And then they never got brought in. So, um, the interns and the um, RJ and I... At different times, we spent times going out tumbling them, making sure they're all right, making sure there's nothing in them, and then um, bringing them in, getting them stored properly. And I have one out there I'm going to tumble. I'm going to start with Gertie's and get hers washed up and start washing every morning, too. 
Will you stop? He's a dork. He's a dork, dork, dork. Sure, thank you. All right, in the fields. Now, what did we get done in the fields? This is my cam, my wildlife cam, game cam, whatever you're going to call it. Okay, come on. What's going on in the fields? What did we do? I know. We forgot to talk about that. Well, we'll talk about it right now. Okay, so um, we have a, a friend of ours who has more than one mower. He has some riding mowers and stuff, and he's got commercial grade mowers, right? Because mm -hmm. he mows around his um, horse farms that are open to the public. And he knew that my riding lawnmower was down. We're waiting on another part. Um, we got the cable fixed, and now the little seat thing won't. So I have it on order. And I really just wish there was a lawnmower man that kept parts on stock so that we could just buy them. I hate ordering online. But anyway, um, so, he knew that mine was down, and he is also the gentleman that gifted us um, the horse stock. He blessed us with it. He didn't gift it to us. He, he kind of gave it to us really, really, really inexpensive so we could afford it. Um, and anyway, uh, he sent a mower, a Cub Cadet industrial mower to do everything so that we got the garden caught up. Um, it doesn't drive in between the stuff at the front like the picnic tables and stuff is, but my little push mower, I can zip that right up in there. We're going to finish that up today um, and get everything um, on track, right? Mm -hmm. How nice is that thing to drive? It's like self-propelled. How wide is that? Thing? Wider than our riding mower. Yeah, it's wider than our riding mower. It's a big thing and you got that if you do it in fourth gear, it's about jogging speed. It, it's about jogging speed. <laughs> yep. So I'm a two. I like to do it in two. You know, I was safe in two. But where we struggle with the, the small push mower, like behind the privet hedge, it just meh, right through there. It was. I don't know the grass the other day that's like this tall to me. The part of the um, garden orchard. that I, or the orchard that I hadn't gotten to, you know, I left that big spot because I was just running on empty um, and so RJ took that cup to that and just and then the next time we mow it'll all be gone it just yeah, no it just laid some of it over though and yeah some of it just laid over but at least it's it mowed some of it off mm -hmm. so I'll but, mow it again today and then we'll go well we'll go. and we need to um, there's two things that we're going to do for this Cub Cadet for Kevin allowing us to use it. Um, is we're going to sharpen the blade, which will help a lot because it hasn't been used in a long time, huh? And then um, when I ordered my part, there is a handle that was broke on his. And it's like a $5 part. But he, like us, doesn't like to order online. Well, I got him at a, a mower place, so I'm just ordering both and going to fix it. That way he can, you know, use the little thing. He just uses a block of wood and you just cut it to the height that you want it. He has it set to his height. Then he says it's probably a little tall, but he has horses walking on his grass and he wants it a little taller so it's softer for them. Um, but we just, I'm just going to replace the handle. Um, it is what it is, huh? It, it's, our philosophy is you always send it back in better condition than when you borrow it. Um, that's give it just, an oil change too. Yeah, we're going to give it an oil change just because he didn't have to offer it. I mean, he didn't have to send it to us. Um, he just knew that my push, mo my uh, riding mower was down. RJ had been talking about it, and he heard him, and he says, "You know, I've got a spare. Let's just ship that over there." So he did, and that was, you know, wonderful. But we always send things back. If we borrow something, we send it back in better condition than when it came to our home. Just our rule. Correct. Right. Used to hate hate it because we'd borrow somebody's trailer before we got our stock trailer, and what did you have to do? It out. We always took it back, cleaned it out, and he would gripe because it's not all his horses' poop, or it's not all his cattle's poop, or it's not. <laughs> and some of those stock trailers, Eddie's that one time was really full, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. He had taken like a big old load of cattle to sale, and then we borrowed the stock trailer, and there was poop everywhere. It was nasty, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Poor kid. But it's just our rule: we borrow something, we send it back in better condition than when we borrowed it. So. All right. Anything else in the fields? No. The pump is going. 
right? Pumping that old well out onto the pasture. Um, and it's doing wonderful, isn't it? Yep. Okay. All right. In the farmhouse. Yes, we're here. We're done. Let's go to bed. Go to bed. We just gotta. Actually, my Bike stuff is underneath there. Move that soap so I can get that. I have orders over here that I have to package up. I need up. this. I need that out of the way. I need this. And then there's just. There's, sorry. Things got set while I was mm -hmm. trying to get. Okay, so I got my um, next herb packet. I, I do it once a month. And they, they have a club. And you, they put out kind of what you're going to get. What. Um, what it's going to be addressing and what they use their mix for. And this is called BAM. BAM, BAM, BAM. Yes, BAM, BAM, BAM. Now, the one thing they said about this one bam, bam. is it makes a nasty tea. They said they don't like it as tea, but it's got um, white oak bark, marshmallow root, mullein leaf. There's marshmallows in this. Comfrey, Comfrey root, no. I don't see any. Black walnut leaf, gravel root, uh, wor wormwood, St. John's warts, skull cap, and labella. I don't know. A lot of these I have not heard of. Um, this is not your typical. They use it as an elixir or a syrup. Or a gluten. Um, they said that it's just. She's, I don't they see said the marshmallows, very, guys. It's marshmallow root. Marshmallows grow. Mom went sure. in a marshmallow tree. <laughs> anyway, so they said it doesn't make a very good tea, but it does. Um, we are now taking donations stuff. of marshmallow trees. <laughs> just mail them to the address below, right? Yes, I will type our address in the comments. <laughs> no, he's already in the little thing. Oh, okay, yes, please send them. <laughs> send as many of them as you can find. Um, so, anyway, the BAM, this is for bone and bark. muscle. There you go. It's for um, muscles and bone repair and all that kind of stuff. Um, the one lady said she used it because she tore her rotator cuff. And so she just, they they came up with this one. And her husband has knee issues. Um, he's had surgery or whatever um, from playing sports bam, bam, bam. in the old days. So um, it is called BAM. I haven't bam, done anything with it. So because obviously I have this thing to deal with. Bam, bam, We've bam. had the car thing going on. Um, just everything. BAM, BAM has marshmallows in it. We need a marshmallow tree, folks. We really need a marshmallow tree. Sure. So anyway, if send me one, I greatly appreciate it. You can send the bill to her though. Send the bill. Um, we had the soaps go up, right? And they went selling. See that? That's some of these. We have some of these. I know, but it's in the video. I'm gonna see if it's back. Okay. I'm sure these folks don't mind that I'm using theirs. The prototype. We have lots of these lovely things, folks. You could order actually, all you want. Actually, some of them have already sold. Like. It, the, oh. the inventory is correct online, but we don't have as many as he thinks we do. So well, I'm folks, buy all make... you want because we're in short supply, and it'll be another thirty days at least until we. Yep, I'm gonna start Probably making closer some. closer to sixty because uh, mom's getting ready to leave. No, I'm gonna get them made here in the next day or so. I, I okay. make one. I take one week, and each week I make whatever. Um, I've got to make some more cucumber. I have a gentleman who, he is in love with my cucumber soap, and he actually gave me cucumber and said, please, um, make some to sell. And then, uh, and he didn't have a lot of money. He farmed, you know, he gardens to implement his, or supplement his food bill. And uh, he, he grew one and gave it to me. He says, please make some soap. He says, but pay me for the cucumber and soap. So that's how we do it. I don't know why it started. It just did. And he sends me home with, he's done it like two or three times now, so I do. And he loves the soap. I make him out for smaller bars, and then um, he is just him, and that way the big bars don't ruin, so I make him smaller ones, and he likes it. Um, he also, I gave him one of our cologne bars, and he was just all gipsy. He was like, oh, I'll have to try it. He, he loves the stuff. Um, so, he's just an old man that 
Leon's kind of funny, but he comes up to the farmer's market all the time, and we hang out. He says that the farmer's market is like his family. So, yeah, we like that. Um, all right, so what else went on in the farmhouse? Where's where I'm going? Where are we getting ready to go? Well, we're not getting ready to go. Where am I getting ready to go? I'm getting ready to go but No, you're not. Um, we're getting ready to go mow. What else are we getting ready to... We're getting ready to kick her to the curb. She can be gone. Just go. I'm Boot her out the door. Where am I going? And who am I going away. with? She's going away, folks. For a long, long time. <laughs> She's going to be in the county pen. Uh-huh. Where are we going? Just don't send her any money. Son, where am I going? <sighs> Let's see. Where are you going? Branson. I'm going no, to Branson. Fine. But now, who am I taking with me? I'm not going to the loony bin and I'm not getting locked up, okay? Um, Where are you going? It's okay, guys. We have to tell her that. Just that way she'll you agree uh -huh. to go. Okay. Who's going with me? Bella, actually. The two They're the only interns. ones that uh, are brave enough to drop her off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're going to Branson. We're going to go to uh, Baker's Creek Nursery. We're going to hang out there for a little bit. We're going to stay in Branson. And we're going to go to Hard Work U, which has a fruitcake and jelly um, place, a uh, kitchen. They have a, a museum and a chapel and a mill. So we're going to go and check them out. Those are our things. Now we're also going to go and do, the girls have never been to Branson. Hard Work U is, is in um, Ozark, College of the Ozarks or Mountain of the Ozarks. It's right around there. And uh, then Baker's Creek is actually north of there. <coughs> and it's going to take us I don't know, a couple hours to get there. But that's okay. It's just going to be our day trip. And we're staying on a resort where there's a pool. And at this little resort, they have little activities the girls can do. There's parasol painting, tie-dye t-shirts. They've already decided they're doing tie-dye. And so for like $12, they can tie-dye a t-shirt together as an activity there at the resort. Um, they looked at me and said, well, you can't even buy a $12 t-shirt at Walmart. You know, they're all $19.99 or whatever. And... Uh, of course, the girls are artistic, so they're really excited about that. And then, like artistic, not autistic. <laughs> um, then the parasols. You get a parasol, and you pay like twelve dollars again, and you get to paint the parasol or do whatever. And so the girls are looking at us. They get to do these activities in Branson for fun, um, and they get a souvenir to take home. Oh, I broke it. He broke it. <gasps> You broke my eraser. That's my good eraser. Why didn't you break one of those nasty pink ones? That's this a, won't break. That's a box. That's a. It's a power juice. It look, it work. lights up too. Mm-hmm. Quick. Um. I'm trying to get my ring here to play with. Not the rope. Find an eraser, I meant. Um. Anyway, so we're gonna do stuff like that, but we're also going to do. Up, I'm going to take him down on the landing. There's an old ice cream parlor. Do not. It's got a safety pin. Do not. Is that him? Not playing. We'll find an eraser. Well, find the blue stick. Leave your lips shut. <laughs> Play with these. Just don't do the big one. Uh huh. Anyway. So I'm also going to take them down on landing. That there's things that aren't really farm related that are in there. But if you're going to Branson, we're not doing like the Titanic and the um, Silver Dollar City. Those things are like forty and fifty dollars, and these girls don't have forty and fifty dollars. We plan on doing um, everything, including gas, for about a hundred bucks. Um, and that means a hundred bucks all week, including everything, you know. So, uh, we're okay with that. We're going to take our own food. The place that we're staying, you bring in your own food. There's free shuffleboard, basketball, um, swimming pools. What else do they have? They've got grills outside. You can bring, you got a whole little kitchen in there. Um, so you can, uh, 
bring your food, bring your cooler, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, the girls have each picked a meal that they're going to cook, and then we've got one night that the little resort that we have has an eclectic mix of the shows come in and you eat dinner. And, and again, it's like 12 bucks. You sit there and you get your meal and you get a show. It's only $11.99 plus shipping and handling. It's not $11.99 plus shipping and handling. You said everything's like 12 bucks. At the resort, everything that we want to do. And then, oh, the girls figured out Monday through Friday at like 1 o'clock. We have to be back every day at 1. And I said, why? And they go, they have an ice cream social for $3. So you go down to the pool and you eat ice cream by the pool and meet the other guests. So, um, it's, I think they're really looking forward to it. It's nothing great. We are fitting in two things that, um, fits into the lifestyle that we leave here, which allows them to go with me and stuff. So, and we can do it cheap. So the girls, like I said, neither one has ever been to Branson. They've been through Branson to Silver Dollar City and that's it. Um, and that's one of the reasons we're not doing Silver Dollar City again. Uh, that's okay with us. So, all right, what else has been going on in the farmhouse? <laughs> Anything else? He didn't know. He didn't know. It's safety. Now you have a safety eraser. All right, I did um, find, and I have a couple of his books. And I can't believe I have forgotten about them. Um, if you have ever heard of Jerry Baker, if you garden at all, Jerry Baker is an awesome dude. And the backyard He's problem not too solver. too awesome if you forgot about him. I, I have Flower Power and something else of his books. And they're amazing. But this one, you guys have to pick. This is if you have any book in your arsenal and if you're a gardener. This is the one. It's got tinctures and tonics back here, and it, it's like everything from plant stress reliever to deer repellent to all different kinds of aphid repellents. Um, it's not worth it. There's an all weather green up, grass green up tonic. There's an ant control tonic. Um, there's a disease defense. There is pages and pages. Let me see here. And it's I'll a just really thick book, just in case. It is, right. but the tonic part that, and I had forgotten, I had to look something up for somebody. I had loaned this book out for a while, and uh, she had texted me and said, hey, in that book you have this. So it reminded me that I have this book, and I'm like, here I am trying to garden, and I haven't done it. This whole section right here has pages upon pages, and you can see it's, it's quite wide, like this. And each one of those black headers is a tonic. And it tells you, but here's the thing about the tonics, okay? I'm just going to, this is a rose startup tonic. It's got stuff like dish soap, hydrogen peroxide, whiskey, and vitamin B plant starter. Um, the seed starter tonic has vinegar, baby shampoo, or liquid soap, and warm water. Um, well, he uses things, he even tells you, that's not to breathe in. I don't believe it. Hyperventilated. Yeah. It changes your, it changes your, your uh, intake because you're very conscious of it and you're supposed to pay attention to how the bag is going in and out. Um, but he even talks about the difference between um, ammonia and your urine and he teaches you how to use them. Uh, there's a hot bite spray and it's so that squirrels will quit munching on your stuff. It's got cayenne pepper, hot water, hot sauce, ammonia, and baby shampoo. There's house plant repotting mix, and he talks about using potting soil and Epsom salt, bone meal, and instant tea. So there's knock 'em dead bug spray, which has garlic, onion, cayenne, and liquid soap. So all these things, I mean, they're not all organic. But they're definitely stuff I have around my house. And that is why I had this book. And I forgot all about it. And yeah, there's even a beauty bath for bulbs. There's um, cabbage worm wipeout. There's bug be gone spray, beetle juice, bulb cleaning tonic, bye bye birdie tonic. So um, there's black spot remover tonic for um, 
I don't know, it says to, I don't know what black spot is, but anyway, there's bedtime snack, like when you put your, your uh, thing, and in here, in the book here, it's a lot of his grandma's stuff, and how she used it, and how he adapted it, and so it, it, here is two of the tonics, and he's teaching him how to use them, so the back part is all the tonics listed, but then, and he's got it broken down by month, too, and like here in the back part of it, uh, Let my head, I have had they ha he has a calendar care section, and it tells you what you should be, you should be doing, so I'm going to have to read this book again. I have it, and I can't believe I forgot about it, just saying. All right, anything else in the farmhouse? Look at that. This is my shawl pin. I know it was in there. It's a little uh, All right, anything else going on in the farmhouse? I don't think so. Um, on the porch. Oh, that's okay. putting up the mill. Yep. On the porch, I have my thing. What do I do with it? I started working on my shirt again. And I wanted to see if I could get it done in time for the fair. And then share. And then share. Okay, so. And you know you didn't talk about your weekend here. We're not done in the farmhouse. What did you do last night? No, because we don't have podcasts on Saturday. This is Sunday. What kept us from podcasting yesterday? What did we want to include in this week's podcast? What we did yesterday. Mm -hmm. Which was what? Went to a horseman clinic. With who? Who put it on? Byron Ho. Yep. So Kyla, his wife, grew up half mile from here. Um, dad and her were neighbors for many, many years. Um, her mom cut Lee's hair for years. She was a beautician. And they moved to be closer to his parents and her parents south of town. And so we're still friends, and Kyla married Byron Hogan. Now, who's Byron Hogan? Uh. He's Hogan Equine now, but what is he known for? The uh, one with $100,000 Mustang Challenge. Yep. Um, he's been like on the Today Show. He had his 15 minutes of glory and fame. And he is associated right now. He's got three really wild ones, he said, right? Yep. Uh, anyway, RJ went. And so what all did you learn in the clinic? How to have toilet paper races? Yep. And there's a video game. And you can put your finger on. And it's think a skiing one, left. I think he said. Think to move right, and it will move. It, it does it by your pulses and, you, and your thought pattern. Anyway, what did Byron say? How does that relate to horses? If a machine can pick it up, then a horse can pick it up. Yep. So he, he he tried to tell everybody that they're very sensual. They can sense things. They they know what's going on. And he said, if a machine can do it, by golly, a horse can do it. Um. And what was it that he uh, said? You're supposed to drive them like a shopping cart, right? Yep. He says that's why he says people tend to correct before the horse has made the mistake. And he is so true. And I can't say it enough. I've told RJ a hundred times, you know, just let the horse think for itself. Let the horse. And what is Precious's biggest problem right now? Thinking for herself. Yep. Because we spend so much time. And how did Byron say it? We're Do managing them. We manage them instead of. Um, working with them. And I've always said one horse, one man, one team. The horse has to know its job and it has to do it on autopilot and the person is just along for the ride and do their own job. So um, he put it in a little bit different way, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. he, he broke it down in stupid people terms as we call it. And he broke it down in a way that it's not mom fussing at RJ. He has a lot of the same philosophies we do, but he puts it differently. So um, that's a good thing, right, son? Mm -hmm. And so you learned a lot, and we hung out with him. Now, we did do a little clip, and we're going to stop and pop that in right here, um, just so you can see what all went on. Let's get over here. Okay. Uh, she's not really connected. She's not wanting to connect. I 
kind of made that so intense, she didn't really have a choice that last time. Y'all see that? I turned up the heat so high, couldn't leave her hand on the stove, she had to take it off. I just wanted to be uncomfortable to the point where you go, you know, I might, I might want to take my hand off the stove. I'd like to get to this other side. Okay, so we're kind of connected now. So when I get on, this, oh, okay. about to lose our connection and what we do, I'm just going to bend her around here, bend her around, bend her around, let her, let her be uncomfortable, this is what I would do with yellow, and then here in a minute she's going to give me her hip up, and soften up, and then we're going to try to yell. And they're and they're want to be hot, nervous, and it makes us a little hot, nervous. If you can just relax and, and bend them around a little bit, what that does is that allows them to to make the choice to slow down. Okay, we get to hanging on them. They're going to get a little stronger, right? We go to pulling with both hands. They're going to pull on us, but we're just bending them around a little bit. We're just making it really awkward and really uncomfortable to be hot, and nervous. All right, so. Yeah, kind of, sort of. We're here on a Saturday night, and RJ, who are you spending your Saturday night with? Byron Hogan and Kyle uh, Hogan. Yeah, <laughs> he almost said her maiden name. Okay, so who is Byron and Kyla? Those are these people. They're these people. Kyla is neighbor from way gone by, but Byron, who are you? Because well, you're important, uh, right? Around know what I'm known as Kyla's husband, <laughs> and uh, I just have learned to answer to that wherever I go. Okay, but what is your job? Who are you with and, and what? Um, you know. How do people identify you? Some people might say professionally that we're self-employed. We're part of the horse industry. Uh, we <laughs> call our business Hogan Equine. And uh, we decided to go with that type of name rather than a training barn or horsemanship because we're involved in a lot of aspects. So okay. not only do we train, but we do educational clinics. Um, we do guest experience or guest services or um, consulting, does marketing. We consult. everything. Uh, we so do a little bit of announcing and uh, yeah. We just you do, you do Mustangs. Mm -hmm. We do do Mustangs. Okay, uh, that's our big thing because we have two Mustangs and how many Mustangs do you have? Right now we have three wild ones. Three they're, wild they're ones. They're completely wild. Are they? Oh my goodness. Yeah. All right. So RJ, what are you doing hanging out with them? I attended their clinic in No Water. Okay. Doing what? Horse races? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> toilet paper. <laughs> toilet paper, horse races. Just kind of having fun and learning what? About horses. And connecting with them, correct? Yes. All right. Did Byron do a good job? Yeah. <laughs> Putting him on the spot. <laughs> did. He asked several times if Arjun could be his guinea pig, didn't he? Yeah. And Arjun's like, yeah, go ahead. And Kyla, what did you do in all this? You know, I was the water girl. Oh. Uh-huh. And I took And you pictures. took photos. Yep, and so, I try to be encouraging because I can relate to a lot of these people yep. that are so. having issues with horses because that's daily for me. So pretty much we just hang <laughs> and out. And she encourages me. There right. you go. Well, I think I'm doing a terrible job. That's what she's there for. She yeah. comes over and there says, you no, go. Byron is good. And all I'm known for is hitting everybody's dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Long story. We'll talk about that later another time. All right, we're going to let you guys get out of here. So everybody say bye. Bye. Yeah. And our bye. thing is, is you have to get back to work. Okay, so, and I was, back. <laughs> I was not there to hit dogs. Um, it's a long story, but when Kyla was younger, they had a really good dog that was the, her dad's catalog, and we drove up, and somebody hit their dog. So we scooped the dog up, called them at the arena. Now, this is back in the time of pay phones, mind you, okay, and not every arena had a pay phone. So we called the pay phone at the uh, OS, uh, Oshaleta thing and they said please 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 we'll meet you so they came from the rodeo and we came from here and met with their dog and she just had a broken leg thankfully a um, couple of cracked ribs stuff like that but she was fine um, and then when another time when Byron was up here with Kyla I guess before they got married right yeah. or right before they got or right after they got married I can't remember <coughs> <coughs> anyway I drove down because we had a horse that was in distress and I needed Byron and I knew he was in town and I needed Kyla. Kyla is awesome with horses too. So I drove down and got them and, sh and 
when I drove in to get them, their little dog um, barked and bit at the tire, and one of her teeth got caught in the rim of the car, and I felt so horrible. I was almost falling. I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to hurt your dog. So her tooth been out like this. Well, what we found out last night, because we hadn't talked about it since then. I mean, Byron's like, oh, she's fine. It's not even the first time she's done it. Had to have teeth removed. She had pieces. Maybe it'll match on the other side, you know, because she's done it before. Um, and they don't know how to make her stop. She, she just takes these moods sometimes and, and just da, 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 da. And she got her tooth caught. And he says, not even the first time. You'd think she'd learn. So um, they we took care of the dog real quick. He knew what to do because he's already dealt with it. He's like, it's not a big deal. Um, and then we came up, doctored your horse. They were on the four-wheeler and doctored your horse. And then the next morning, they took her to the vet to have those teeth done. They're like, yeah, we do it. It's fine. I said, okay. What we found out last night was the dog was acting funny. And the vet tested her for something. They just did... They did something, and it showed up, and it made him think of tick fever. So he tested her, and she had tick fever um, very, very badly. So it turned out that by my hitting their dog, I didn't hit her. She bit, and then it didn't did turn loose. Hit. And I, I couldn't stop fast enough. I was like, oh, my God. So, um, yeah. And uh, anyway, she uh, had tick fever, and it actually saved her life for her bite in my tire. And I, I have felt horrible forever. But our history with dogs is just, I think it has to do with the fact that we live down the street from each other, huh? Yeah. Because they've had little dogs and, you know, so, oh, well. It is what it is. Correct. Now, Kyla is also Jace's sister. Jace is the one that came and helped take down the big tree, huh? He was yep. the one driving the truck that went, mm. So, yep. Right? Yep. So, friends good friends um they've just been around forever and we've known them forever so anyway all right anything else in the farmhouse before i move on just you? move on and we'll come back if we need to <laughs> all right so the other thing i've been working on is the bodice of my little baby doll type shirt i know it does not look like i've gotten very far <clears throat> but i have doubled this okay just saying I have doubled this. wasn't very far to me, you know what? No. I, well, on this part, I've got the other part down here. And so, um, this, and as you can see, it goes across. It's, I don't know how many. It, Just don't start picking up stitches or dropping stitches. Yeah. So, I can't even hold it. Unless you got your curvy figure. <laughs> voluptuous then I can add in stitches right okay so this is a bodice and it's really loose um, I don't remember how many count it is but it's it's pretty long I really like the way the yarn is working up though it's kind of stripy but not let's see I don't know I guess they call that pooling and soft so I don't know if that goes for everything but I like the way it's doing and this is RJ's um, yarn from his mohair and then here is the two uh, don't lose it don't lose it don't lose it sorry i have a uh it holds my stitch that is the end of the row and this is going to be the top and then it's going to be a big flowing thing i have two of these not just one right one's missing there it is oh there was a start Okay, and I lost the stitch marker, so I have this loop right here. <laughs> but this is the other one. And that one. And then it's going to be a flowing square. So, I am working on it. Um, I'm going to take this with me on vacation, right? So, I will be working on that. And I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to take, another needle. I want it to be kind of have some little design. So I'm going to do some uh, rows with design in them on a bigger size needle. I just think it would look cool. So that's I'm going to try it. The worst thing is that if it doesn't look good, what am I going to do, son? Rip it out. Like Rip it out. So 
And this is my big cowboy bag. And you know what I like about this bag? What? There's my little thing here. It has a pocket in the bottom of it. It does, but it's a self-closing -clos pocket. And you put your yarn in there, and it doesn't... I used to call them my, my commuter, bag, commuter bags. I haven't made any in a long time. I wonder how come. But you put your yarn in here. And this top, I'm going to hold it up here in a second. I didn't have my yarn in there because I had some other things in there. Um, the top seals up. It's a, And then your yarn will pull right out of it. But your ball stays in there. So it's actually in your bag. And you can have your, your big old bag on your lap, which is what I do, and be working, and your yarn doesn't go all over, so it stays in your bag and just pulls right out. So, um, with a center pull ball, just so you're saying. So, but and it will hold a 400 yard fingering weight ball, the whole ball with it in there. So, and this is sewed into the bottom of the, of the bag, so you, it's not going anywhere. Anyway, I haven't made any of those in a long time. I wonder why. I need to go back to making some bags, don't I? I need to make some cute bags again. I still got a bunch. Yeah, I just haven't put them in the shop or anything, have I? Mm -hmm. Maybe I should work on that. It's because we switched shops and all that good stuff, huh? And I haven't found a good way to put them the sections in there for them, but I just haven't found a good way to uh, put them in there. Yes, I charged it from last night. Thanks. All right. Anything else? Now, I'm not even leaving this week. I have one more week of work, and then next Saturday we're leaving, so we will probably podcast a little bit early. Um, and a lot of it's just going to be me getting ready to go. I've got to get some things done because who's running the farm while I'm gone? Bob, Fred, and Jimmy. No. Who's running the, car, the farm while I'm gone? It's me and dad. And it's hard because how many vehicles are you have? I'm leaving my truck here and I'm taking the car. And what did we find out this last week about having one vehicle? It's a pain in the butt. It is. If anybody has a vehicle they would like to get rid of for a week, <laughs> drop it off. <laughs> Actually, we're working on maybe finding this just an old pickup to stay here at the farm. Um, we don't know. We're working on it. We're thinking about it. And I think I just want to get an old clunker truck that can stay here. And that way, we're not so pressed. It was like, it was a scheduling nightmare. Um, with one vehicle and three of us, RJ had to go to work every day, so we had to go at night. We had to drop him off at work while Lee and I went and searched for another car. Dad going to work, picking up feed. Dad didn't even go to work. And we that's the thing is, is when we were looking for a car, he didn't go to work. Um, he took vacation days because it was too much. We, we just could not physically get everything done in a day that we needed one vehicle for. So, um, Dad's going to take my truck and go to work that week, and then he's going to come home, and when he gets home, you're going to what? Get to work. He's going to go to work and then come home. So there will be somebody on the farm all the time, and then there will be somebody you know, going to work all the time. <laughs> okay, but this one doesn't charge. Charge it right now. Well, how come you can't plug in the computer and it charges? It doesn't ever charge more. It, it doesn't ever... I don't know. Anyway, so, he's fussing with it now. He can't get plugged in. Anyway, we did learn that it was really, really hard. Hey, you're being too loud. Um, thing works. What? You plug it into the USB port. Um, it was really, really hard. It was like scheduling a third job. Um, everybody's had to have on the same sketch on the same calendar, and we had to go here and there. And I'm just really glad that we didn't have any um, dentist appointments. Like RJ's got a dentist appointment coming up in August. If we'd had a dentist appointment or anything, it surely would have knocked off our schedule because we had it timed um, when we'd go to Walmart to do the run for you know groceries. 
and, and we've been just one week without a vehicle, and it was hard, really hard. Correct. Yep. So, and then, um, thankfully, we got the the second car on Wednesday. It was one week, and it. Now that we've got the little car, it's just like, ah, you can breathe. So, it's a good thing, right? Yeah. All right, so next week we'll probably podcast on Friday and just make it post on Saturday. So, right? Yep. All right, we're going to get off here and we're going to what? Go to sleep. Get back to work. Talk to you later. Bye.